Coming up, I want to see Logan CV get in a winged sprint car on the regular, and I feel guilty about it. We'll discuss that, plus some thoughts on the current state of weekly dirt racing. Let's go. It's Tuesday, February 20th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. Before we get started, if you enjoy these daily shows, please consider hitting that subscribe button on YouTube or at your favorite podcast platform. It's always free to uh, subscribe. That won't ever change, just like these shows being free to watch and listen to. That also won't change. Our YouTube subscriber goal for the year is to hit 40,000 total, which right now we are a little more than 11,000 away from. So obviously plenty of time. It's only February, so we got a lot of time to get up to that 40,000 number. I want to start today off with a discussion about Logan CV, and it's really going to end up being a commentary on the larger open wheel scene and kind of existing in this dirt racing content space. As I mentioned on Sunday, CV has a real opportunity this year to attack the USAC Triple Crown. It's something that's only happened twice in history where a driver won all three USAC championships in a season. Tony Stewart did it in 1995 and JJ Yaley did it in 2003, and that's the last time it happened. It's been over 20 years. CV won both the midget and silver crown titles a year ago, but had a so-so season in the sprint car. He was only ninth in the final rundown. Things did start to turn around, though, late in 2023. And his last 11 USAC sprint car starts include four wins, nine top fives, and 10 top tens. The sprint car was his weakest area in 2023, but no finishes worse than third through this opening uh, six races in 2024 seemed to point to that maybe being rectified here with this new Abacus Racing sprint car team. In the crown car last year, it was three wins and nine top fives in 11 races, and his pavement racing really took a step forward. And he's continued to show why he's an incredible midget racer, bagging eight wins and 24 top tens in 27 races, to say nothing of his back-to-back Chili Bowl wins. I feel like based on what we've seen from CV the last year and a half, he should be getting talked about a lot more, but clearly that's a symptom of him being a non-wing racer. And regardless of whether he actually completes the Triple Crown in 2024 or not, he's still on one of the great non-wing runs uh, in history, especially more recent history. All of this non-wing success, though, has led to questions of when we'll see CV do more winged sprint car racing. And supposedly that's coming when he has some off days in 2024. We talked back in January about Swindell Speed Lab working on some stuff to get CV some starts in their 39. It's a great move for CV and something I'm excited to see. I don't see any reason why his talent won't translate, and he's had good runs in winged cars before. See the Trophy Cup in 2023 as one example of that. If I'm the car owner of a winged 410 team, I definitely have CV on my radar because I feel like he could be on a similar trajectory to Tyler Courtney. Sunshine, obviously a very good non-wing racer himself, but is now well on his way to being one of the top wing guys in the country. The status and notoriety, though, is very different for those two groups. I myself almost feel guilty for wanting CV to make the jump because shouldn't we just be okay with what he's doing on the USAC side? I think too uh, that CV is an interesting case study of how driver development isn't always linear or exponential all the time. Yes, we have guys like Christopher Bell and Kyle Larson who rise quickly, but for others, it takes time. CV was once on the same track as those other two drivers and did get a few chances on pavement and in NASCAR and ARCA. That window, though, to do that is likely closed based on whatever judgments have been levied on him from the driver development boss people. And it's taken him some time to rise up again out of that, but clearly looks to be on his way to, at the very least, dirt racing stardom. I get messages and comments and criticisms all the time because I don't talk about this driver or that series or this other car type enough. But when you're in the content business, as I've said before, it's difficult to make those other things front and center when they don't draw in eyeballs and ears to what you're doing. I don't get to decide what people click on and watch or listen to. My last three TikToks, for example, all USAC related and all three of my least viewed videos in some time. So you can see why the motivation gets lower to talk about those other things. You put that effort in, nobody tunes in. Even look at today's YouTube video thumbnail, and that's if I don't end up changing it at some point through the day. It's been 229 days since I last featured a non-wing car on a thumbnail on my channel. Maybe that's one reason I want CV to go winged racing, so it'll be easier to justify talking about one of the top young drivers in the country who deserves the accolades instead of burying him as the third or fourth or fifth thing I talk about on a daily show when he's chasing one of the things that very rarely happen in the future or in the history of dirt racing. All right, moving on. In the last 24 hours or so, Houston Speedway in South Dakota announced bumps to their weekly purse payouts. 
uh, joining several other tracks to make such increases this season. Other examples of tracks that have bumped their purses include Knoxville and Attica. And a year ago, almost at this exact same point, we were talking about Port Royal doing the same. Drivers and teams in a lot of areas have been clamoring for these increases, and some tracks are attempting to keep up. This is obviously on the heels of big pushes by lots of central figures in the sport of dirt racing to get increases in that money from the National Series, and not just in sprint car racing, but in other car classes as well, like dirt late model racing. We do, though, seem to be at an inflection point for weekly racing. The upper levels of the sport certainly look like they're continuing to do well, but others a little further down the chain are struggling to keep up. And some in the industry are incredibly negative about the future of weekly shows. We just had East Bay's Al Varnador say several weeks ago that he thinks weekly racing will be gone in five to ten years and pointed towards his issues keeping weekly racing profitable at East Bay as a central reason behind selling off the racetrack. He blamed, as many others have, the streaming services for his issues and talked about the money not filtering down to the tracks. But not every big player in the sport thinks this way. World Racing Group's Brian Carter recently told Jeremy Elliott that he thinks the places that do well weekly will continue to succeed, but that the marginal racetracks are at a real risk. And Todd Quaring, who owns Houston Speedway, plays the weekly racing game uh, you know, all season long, recently said on David Gravel's YouTube channel uh, that he loves streaming. He said it's not going to go away. You have to find a way to adapt to it, and you have to find that sweet spot that works for your racetrack. And from where I sit, I think more promoters need to take Quaring's perspective. Instead of just bemoaning why these factors are keeping you from succeeding, the tracks that will you know, that, that will survive will be the ones who find ways to integrate streaming properly and also diversify their revenue streams. There are other things that these dirt tracks can be used for besides racing on Friday and Saturday nights. I do think there is a significant case to be made that not every dirt race needs to be on a streaming service. But at that point, the point you make that decision uh, where fans aren't able to easily tune in, it's going to take effort and investment to then get race fans to come out to the track on Fridays and Saturdays. They need a reason to do so. The same old playbook just doesn't work anymore, and there's just not enough progress and innovation happening at the racetrack level when it comes to event promotion. I do think there is a way forward for weekly racetracks. The question will be who will actually embrace the challenge and do something about it. All right, that's it for the daily show today. Appreciate you guys tuning in. If you want more dirt racing content, make sure to check out dirttracker.com. Plus, I've been pumping out posts across the Dirt Tracker social media accounts. So make sure you're following on Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, wherever you have accounts, we are as well. I hope you guys have a great Tuesday out there. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.